Here's what you need to know to get started with the Nikon D500. In the box, you'll find the camera, a battery, a charger, neck strap, USB cable, and documentation. We'll walk you through setup and recommend some accessories that will help you get the most out of this camera. Once you've done the basics to get your camera ready to go, let's dive in. If your camera didn't come with a lens, we recommend Nikon 16 to 80 millimeter f2.8 to 4 as a good standard zoom. It's designed for the APS-C format and offers excellent image stabilization. For portraits, you can use the D500's crop factor to your advantage. Nikon's 50mm f1.4 prime becomes a high quality 75mm equivalent lens, ideal for portraiture. We'd also recommend budgeting for an additional battery. The D500's battery life is good, but it can drain if you're shooting a lot of continuous bursts or video. The D500 doesn't have a built-in flash but Nikon's SB500 can be used either as your main light source or as a commander to trigger additional off-camera flashes. It can also act as a video light. The D500 has two card slots, one for the common secure digital media and one for newer XQD cards. If you want to shoot a lot of fast action or film 4K video, we recommend using XQD because of the increased read and write speed. Let's dial in the image quality settings. If you're planning on using the D500 to shoot a lot of sports and fast action, it might be sensible to stick with JPEG capture. But to make the most of the camera's sensor, we like RAW. In RAW mode, we recommend setting the file type to 14-bit lossless compressed. For the best of both worlds, you can select RAW plus JPEG, but that comes at the cost of memory card space. The D500 can also shoot 4K video, but unless you really need the extra detail, we recommend sticking with HD because the crop factor in 4K mode increases to 2.25x, meaning that a 24mm lens behaves more like a 54mm lens. For shooting stills, we highly recommend experimenting with the D500's 3D AF tracking mode. The most obvious applications for this mode are tracking fast-moving subjects like athletes, but it's also useful for portraiture, especially children that can't sit still. For more information about the Nikon D500, including a deep dive into all its key features, visit us online at dpreview.com. Hi, I'm Christine. We're here at the Kodak Pix Pro headquarters and I'm going to be talking to you about the latest in our lineup of Kodak PixPro cameras. One of our most powerful step-up bridge cameras in the Kodak PixPro Astro Zoom line is the AZ652. With an incredible 65 times optical zoom lens and top-notch 20 megapixel CMOS sensor, this camera is loaded with cutting-edge features that will help you take photos like a pro. It's even compatible with third-party filters to keep your lens protected and safe. Want to step up your photo game? The AZ652 is the answer. With 5 frames per second burst shooting, an electronic viewfinder, 3-inch articulating LCD screen and outputs, it produces JPEG and RAW files for post-editing. The AZ652 is priced under $400 for a great value and comes with a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, AC adapter to charge your battery, USB cable to download photos, neck strap, and a CD-ROM full of helpful information and editing software. It takes a standard SD card that can be purchased anywhere. This Astro Zoom camera is Wi-Fi enabled, allowing you to share your photos and videos on the go and post to social media and share almost anywhere. To learn more, visit us at KodakPixPro.com. Don't forget to share your photos and videos with us and tell your story. This is Moab, Utah, a former uranium mining town set in a remote land of high desert, rugged canyons, and sandstone rock faces. We've come here with Scott Rinkenberger, a Seattle-based action sports photographer. Last time we were with Scott, 
we were heli-skiing deep in the wilds of British Columbia. For this video, we're shooting a weekend of outdoor activities with the new Olympus OMD EM10 Mark III. The EM10 III is the entry-level model in the OMD lineup. It's a 16 megapixel camera built around the Micro Four Thirds lens mount. It features in-body stabilization, which works both for shooting stills and its 4K video. Most of all, it's a small camera with a lot of features and a lot of direct manual controls. It's designed to welcome the first time user, but gives plenty of room to grow. So we've put it in the hands of an experienced pro and me, a keen amateur. We wanted to get a different perspective on things, so we arrived at dawn to take a doors-off helicopter ride over Canyonlands National Park. As well as being an action photographer, Scott is a fine art landscape shooter, and our elevated vantage point meant he was able to get some spectacular shots. Meanwhile, I concentrated on recording the experience by shooting video. The colour response in the camera has long been a favourite of ours, making both my footage and the sunrise stills look great. And of course, there's always time for a selfie. That was good, yeah, we took off right at sunrise and got some amazing light over an incredibly varied landscape. So you think you've got something? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. What would you think about your first uh, Doors Off helicopter ride? Um, glad I had this safety belt. <laughs> <laughs> but you come straight on the camera, don't look down too much, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. <laughs> As we drove to scout out the location for the next day's shooting, we saw the evening sunshine picking out a tree in the middle of one of the canyons lining the Colorado River. Here's a cool shot for that super wide lens, man. Okay, so I saw that you had uh, brought out a lot of that shadow detail. What was that feature? Um, so it's an option called auto gradation. Yeah. What it does is it, uh, it tries to lift the shadows up. You can take a shot you've already shot, reprocess it with auto gradation on, and you may find that's a more usable file. Interesting. Then it was time to check out some of the climbing locations. Scott had researched a couple of climbs, but wanted to get a chance to see them and assess the location in person. All right, so tomorrow we're going to be shooting rock climbing. I wanted to get out and get a look at some of the uh, climbs we might want to shoot. And the nice thing about it is there are two routes that run in parallel right next to each other, so we can get one up really quickly, hang a rope, and then use that rope to uh, shoot right across at the climber who will be kind of right next to you and then the background is endless. Wow. So it's the plan to do uh, video or stills or a bit of both? Uh, a bit of both. Is there any sensible way down? Easier said than done at this point. <laughs> Well, having come out here to scope out some of the climbing sites, we realised that uh, we've timed it perfectly for sunset and then shortly uh, the moonrise. Moonrise today, 627. Current time, 628. My plan is to use the camera's intervalometer to shoot a time lapse series of images. And on the basis, my camera is going to be shooting a series of something like 75 shots over the next hour. Yeah. There's not a lot I can do. I'm going to go and get myself a beer. Cheers. Meanwhile, Scott used one of the functions included in the camera's new advanced photography mode. All right, so I'm using a function here that's uh, cool for nighttime photography. It's called Live Time. And what it does is it actually displays on the monitor where you're at in the development of your exposure and so instead of sort of having to know or guess at how long a shutter speed to use you can actually watch the shot develop on the screen and then just stop it when uh, the exposure looks right to you. Despite the late night we made another early start which meant driving back up Long Canyon before sunrise. 
I'm not one for heights, or for climbing anything more than a ladder, so thankfully Scott had contacted Kelly Halpin to be our star climber. I've climbed here a bunch. I love these, uh, these cracks here. They're great. Really good quality sandstone. Pretty close to town. Yeah, pretty psyched. To get the right perspective, Scott ascended the rock face to set his line. Once the ropes were in place, Scott rappelled down to get into position. Got my camera, got a rope, I have a climber. She has a rope, and uh, we're just gonna head up this thing in parallel here. Meanwhile, I was much more comfortable shooting from the ground with a 12 to 100 millimeter F4. Scott's vantage point meant he was able to juxtapose Kelly against the vast scale of the landscape, yielding some remarkable results. Thankfully for him, it's quite a small light camera, given how much gear he's already having to carry. But even from down here, I've been shooting 4K video at the long end of the lens, and the stabilisation's really impressive. like perfect hands and then it gets really wide and then my whole arm's in there and then my whole body's in there. It's a great crack. So I have the 7 to 14 uh, 2 8 zoom on here which is a great lens for you know when you're working close to a subject. That's fast, super snappy to focus and the camera's solid on this kind of stuff. It's awesome. While you guys were up there, I took some shots of you. Now, I don't think you've got the app for this camera. Correct. But in theory, I can share it with you anyway. If you go into your Wi-Fi settings, you select that. Got it. That should connect. Now, if you go to a browser, click oh. on that folder. As the owner of the camera, I get to choose which images yep. that, that you have access to. Cool. Bingo. There Thank you, you. There it is. Well, so one of the sort of hard and fast rules of climbing photography is you don't want to just get right under the climber and shoot up at their butt. But you don't always necessarily need to be on the wall climbing with them either. Sometimes you can just find an interesting perch near the climb, and in this case I'm looking directly at the face of the climb and we'll be able to isolate her nicely. Before we left, Scott shot a few portraits safely on the ground with a 45mm f1.2. As well as its national parks, Moab is home to some of the most famous mountain bike trails in the world. I've read about these trails in countless articles over the past 20 years, and today we're going to be riding one of them with Tyson Swayze and his partner Corey. So Moab is uh, definitely one of North America's great mountain bike destinations, so we had to take a day to uh, sample the local goods. And we have reached a point in the ride here where we're up on a desert plateau and there's a really fantastic winding piece of trail behind us with a great backdrop. And so this will be our first shot of the day and uh, see what we can get. Sweet. Not only is Tyson an incredible biker, but he was instrumental in designing and building the trail we're riding. The High Massa and Captain Ahab trails are a little more challenging than I'm used to, and top out at nearly 5,000 feet higher than the level of my desk in Seattle. More than ever, I appreciated being able to leave my tripod behind and stuff the camera in my hydration pack, meaning I could enjoy the trails rather than lugging my gear. Well, it's getting late in the day. The sun is getting very low now. Lovely long shadows. Scott, do you want to describe this setup to us? Yeah, yeah, this is a great spot if you have confident uh, athletes to shoot because we are on the edge of a multi-hundred foot cliff here. But we've got fantastic light, fantastic views, and a really cool stretch of slick rock that comes right along the edge of the canyon. Cool shot. One thing I like about this camera, shooting outside when it's bright, is that you can review your images in the viewfinder. So I've been uh, spending a lot of time looking into here and getting some really good feedback. Whereas I was shooting with the little power zoom that's usually sold with the camera, Scott was taking advantage of Olympus's Pro series of lenses, showing just how much room the camera and the Micro Four Thirds lens lineup give you to grow. First ride in Moab, what'd you think? 
absolutely blown away, mate. Um, it's been an epic couple of days. Not a word I usually use, but uh, we've flown helicopters over, over canyons at sunrise. You've been climbing sheer rock faces, and then we've just been tearing up the trails today. Yeah. Has it been a productive couple of days? Despite all the fun we've been having, or perhaps because of it, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with everything we've got. Finishing out on the canyon rim at sunset with the bikers just absolutely on fire. I've been glancing over your shoulder at some of the shots you've been getting. Um, really looking forward to seeing it. Me too. Let's do this every year. <laughs> but right now, I think we deserve a beer. Agreed, brother. For DP Review, I'm Richard Butler. I love taking cool pictures to post on social media. Photography has always been an interest for me, and my OMD makes it really easy for me to get great shots. This camera has a great look to it. It's small and easily fits in my bag. I always get compliments on the classic look it has when I'm carrying it around, and it's also lightweight too, that I can carry it along with me all day. This camera is really simple to turn on and shoot. If I do need more light, there's this cool built-in flash that's hidden right in the top of the camera. I truly do love this camera, because I don't have to think about the settings, I could just quickly take my shot. And auto mode picks those settings for me. It sees my subject, the scene, the light, and it picks the right settings so I capture perfect shots. My selfies are even super easy to grab, with the image civilization built right in. With the touchscreen on the back, it makes it simple for me to frame the shot. When I am looking to capture something a little bit more specific, I use the specialized modes to choose a scene that I want to shoot. I personally love taking pictures of my fun, cool looking food. I capture sharp images with a perfectly blurred background. Once I'm done, I can simply click that shortcut button on the top of the camera and it takes me right back to the scene menu. Something really awesome about this camera are the built-in filters. Personally, my favorite filter is Bleach Bypass. It gives my shots or video an authentic and old film look that we all love to see on social media. This camera is so easy to use. It grows with me as I'm learning the basics of photography. And as I do become more comfortable, it introduces me to those techniques like HDR shooting and light trails for stars at night. Sharing my pictures on social media is effortless. The shots instantly sync with my Olympus app and transfer directly to my phone. I'm Jacqueline, and Olympus designed the perfect camera for me. 